Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna to put together an IP67 camera. I'm gonna walk you through the steps on how to do this. Whether it's our Triton IP67 cameras or our Atlas 5 Giggy IP67 cameras, I'll go over what you need, how to put them together, and some things you need to think about when pairing a lens with an IP67 lens tube. Here are the components that you'll need. An IP67 camera, in this case, the Triton, lens of your choice, IP67 lens tube, and IP67 cables. Some optional tools you might need are some grease and maybe a pin spanner wrench. Both of these tools are to help with connecting the lens tube to the camera, but in most cases, a good old rubber band can help you get the grip you need. Let's get started by connecting the IP67 cables. The M12 port is for PoE Ethernet, so we'll go ahead and plug in that Ethernet cable, align the cable pins with the port, screwing in the cable until it can't go any further. This is important to get a proper seal. Note that it's normal to have a small gap between the cable's locking screw and the edge of the M12 port. Now we'll want to do the same with the M8 GPIO cable. Unscrew the M8 port plug, Unless you don't need to connect an M8 GPIO cable, keep the plug screwed in. This plug is included and already connected in every IP67 camera unit. Again, you want to line up the pins and screw in the cable all the way in. Unlike the M12 cable, the M8 locking screw will go all the way in and touch the back of the M8 port on the camera. Next, let's move on to connecting a lens and attaching the IP67 lens tube. With all of our lens tubes, you'll need to connect the lens tube ring first, with the exception of being our smallest lens tube. That connects directly to the camera mount without a ring. Screw in the ring all the way to the C-mount. Once it's all the way on, the front of the camera C-mount will actually extend past the ring, just by a little bit by about 0.03 millimeters. This is important because if it's not screwed in all the way in, you won't be able to focus your lens properly. Next, we'll want to attach the lens to the C-mount to the camera. After this, you'll want to connect the camera to the host PC and open up Lucid's ArenaView GUI or any other compatible third-party viewer to configure and focus your lens. Once that is done, screw in the tube and make sure there's no gap between the tube and the ring. That's it, but don't go just yet. We still need to talk about a few lens and lens tube considerations. One of the first things you need to consider is the field of view of the lens, as well as how that relates to your sensor size and your working distance. We have an online lens calculator that can help narrow down the focal length that you require. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but with respect to a lens, the wider your lens's field of view, the wider the IP67 lens tube needs to be. This is especially important for shorter focal lengths because they provide a wider field of views. And if you choose too small of a lens tube, you'll clip out some of the image or get vignetting. Another thing to consider is of course, does the lens physically fit into the tube? You can find this out by comparing the dimensional drawings of the lens to the drawings of the lens tubes. Note that sometimes the lens locking screws might stick out too much, not allowing it to fit into the tube. If that's the case, before you make a lens purchase, check to see if the lens also comes with either low profile screws or recessed screws, and then switch them out. Of course, Lucid support and sales staff will be more than happy to assist you when pairing the right lens with the right lens tube for your IP67 camera. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks again for watching and stay lucid.